I've finally reached the end of it, huh? Just 10 days and 32 bloody episodes to go. And I managed to get it done, somehow, only just getting lapped. Because yeah, I recorded the last three episodes in one go. So what have you thought of the anime this season? Are there any shows that really stood out to you? And what do you think of my views of those shows? Let me know in the comments what you think. What shows you're going to stick with? What shows you're going to abandon? Probably too soon to tell, really, because it is only just the second week, only just of the season starting. Kind of surprised how quickly the season started, to be honest. It's kind of like all in one go, rather than being spread over a few weeks like normal. Because, for the last time this season, this is a 2023 winter anime preview from a different perspective. First up today, we got a long titled anime which is not isekai. It's Reborn to Master Blade from a Hero King to Extraordinary Squire. An anime about an old guy who dies, but on his deathbed is granted a wish by the goddess of whom he has served his life for, and is reborn to Master Blade. Unfortunately, what he doesn't end up doing is being reborn as a guy, as is reborn as a relatively cute silver haired girl, Inglis. Now, having most of his memories from his old life, Inglis, she is reborn with a lot of knowledge about mana, about ether, about the natural order of things, and so is an overpowered character to begin with. But unlike other reborn and overpowered character anime, this one starts off more interestingly because it's a lot more orderly. And whilst, yes, a little baby firing a ginormous laser beam out of her face in order to fight a, off a bad guy, is a bit scary. As we progress, quickly progressed through childhood, we learn that, yeah, he is growing up to be a cute girl now, and a cute girl obsessed with swordplay. She just wants to fight with a sword whenever she can. She wants to be a true swordswoman, and has the ability and power to do so. So we get out this why this one guy, this merchant, this son of a merchant, is winning all his fights in this practice match against this, mer this merchant troop. Turns out he can use a little bit of magic and is making his opponents weaker and wins that way. But she warns her friend's brother that you don't look at him, he's doing something weird. But in doing so, he obviously he does fight back quite well until he ends up backed up into a corner and not knowing he's about to run into a wall, does so and loses the fight. Varying at this, Inglis decides to fight him. She's got this little, got really like something like a 10 year old girl fighting a normal adult male. And yet, somehow, she wins. And so a legend of Inglis starts. Now this does look to be an anime which appeals to me. And not just because the character designs are very appealing. I'll be honest, I've followed this artist on, uh, uh, in the past as well, and I do really like the work she does. She does really good artwork. And the character designs here are definitely very good. And so I was hopeful that the storyline to this one would fit up to the artwork. And even though it's relatively same in places, I'll be honest, it does so. It is interesting. Inglis is an interesting main character, but she's got the almost cheekiness about her, but she knows she's overpowered, she knows she's cute, and she just owns it. She's not being overconfident or being unpleasant about it. She says, yep, yeah, I'm cute, I know it. I'm good with a sword, I know it, I'm going to beat your ass. Will her overconfidence hurt her in the future? Who knows, but I'm definitely going to be watching more of this one to learn about it. If you want to watch Reborn to Master of Blade, you can find it airing over at Crunchyroll. On a very different note, our next anime is not about a girl knowing she's cute and invincible. It's an anime about a guy who knows he's invisible. Unfortunately, Kubo Won't Let Me Be Invisible is the name of this anime, in which our main character Junta is such a basic vanilla main character nobody really notices his presence. The teacher refuses to accept his bear. He's seen as a super super rare character in Gacha despite having perfect attendance because nobody even realises there, nobody knows his presence, he never gets called on in class, he never gets called on to do chores, he's just there in the background, fading out of existence. The girl next to him in class, Kubo however, is definitely not that. She has a centre of attention, she's beautiful, she's smart, she's witty, and she's also for some reason head over heels in love with Junta. And so we get this interesting one-way relationship where Kubo is kind of nudging Junta into doing certain things to test out his, uh, his abilities of stealthiness. 
How far can he get in class standing up in his chair before the teacher or anybody else notices him doing it? Apparently quite far. How, far. how close do I have to be to Kubo in order to get a selfie and get the camera, get the camera to notice his bear and do facial recognition on him? Again, quite close. And little things like that. This is going to be an anime where Kubo is poking at him or saying, do something, do something. Junta's almost like a toy to her. It's it's that one anime where another character bullies another character for her entire it's, But it's not about bullying, it's about just a cute girl just chatting and having chats with her neighbour in, in class. One being a centre of attention, one being invisible. Only this time, the invisible girl, it, the invisible character isn't a girl, it's a guy. And the guy himself is relatively plain and not interested. Kubo is very interesting, very cute. She's also voiced by Kana Hanazawa, which is also a very pleasant audio experience as well. But makes two very cute Hanakana as we've got this season. Now my one worry about Kubo won't let me be invisible is its staying power. So far in the first episode, it's very much a one-trick pony. You've got Junta being invisible, Negus being cute, a Junta being invisible, Kubo being cute and interested in him, and poking him to do stuff. There doesn't seem to be any new any change from that scenario in the future from what I can see. But who knows, I could be wrong, this one could go in interesting places. But on the back of my head it feels like it's going to be the same joke a million times, just altered for different occasions. Maybe next week it won't be standing on a chair, it'll be sitting backwards or not being present or changing seats, little things which she could do in class to make herself more noticeable. Maybe she gets a friend to notice him as well, may start becoming better friends that way. Maybe the end game is getting people to notice him or getting him to notice her. That's another thing which seems to be happening. Even though Junta is close friends with Kubo, he doesn't seem to be clicking but she's interested in him. I digress on that matter. Kubo Won't Let Me Be Invisible is a very cute anime airing over at High Dive which you can catch there every week. If you thought we were done with Isekai, then we're not. We've still got one more this season to talk about and that's the next anime Campfire Cooking in Another World with My Absurd Skill. An anime about four heroes transported to another world, one of which has a stupid skill which is not that useful, so he's kicked out of the party straight away and wants to just live his quiet life, living anonymously without anybody bothering him. Which is fair. I mean, why would you want to kill a demon lord if you got a stupid skill like online shopping? I mean, what's that even mean? Well, I'll tell you what it means. It means that he can summon up a website in front of him and buy stuff from his online store. You can just buy groceries online and deliver them to him in another world. I mean, he starts to pay for them, so he's going to have to earn money to do so. This seems he might be able to live the cushy life, just living off his online groceries. He may also be able to make a living out of it by selling stuff or making stuff in this other world using our items just delivered to him online. Although he's got an interesting quandary because he quickly discovers that this world is not as pleasant as it seems. There's a very much a big class structure. People will quickly use and abuse people which are under them. And so if people learn he's got this really powerful ability where he can just buy items online, they're just going to abuse him for it and he's not going to be in a better position. So he decides to leave a country, go to another place to try and live an anonymous life where nobody knows he was summoned and find himself cooking for his adventurers in the middle of the woods where we're attacked by a wolf Fenrir. And when I say attacked, they're not, they're not really attacked. In fact, Fenrir just comes down from where mountains to taste his food because it smelled so good and because this food was so good he ends up contracting with Fenrir at the end of the episode. So this looks to be an anime where our main guy Sayoshi is going to be travelling around this other world with his new friend summon his new friend and contractor Fenrir probably as a merchant or some kind of travelling cook or chef and there's maybe open a restaurant or with a wolf who probably not living in another world with his new found ability to buy ingredients from our world, only in another world. This reminds me a lot of Isekai Capitalism from a few episodes ago as well. It's the same setup of a guy with a skill in another world which is not so much combat related but more utility related. Utility skills in another world is probably going to become a big trope in future if it isn't already. I'm not talking things like being in another world smartphones because that's just silly. It creates an interesting anime with a bizarre concept. It's not an overpowered isekai, it's not winning over all the ladies with his ability to buy stock cubes. 
but the anime will definitely live and die based on what he does with his power. Judging on the first episode though, I'm hopeful. If you are interested in watching Campfire Cooking, this one's airing over at Crunchyroll. And finally for this season, we've got Kaina of a Great Snow Sea, an anime about a boy and a girl living on completely different planes of existence, or planes of living anyway. Kaina, a guy living up on the, I want to say the surface of a shield around the earth. And Princess Liliha living underneath it in the, the snow sea. The great snow sea, as it kind of hints. Now, the anime itself doesn't really say much about what's going on, other than we've got two different groups of people. Those living within the dome, this, you may, you may really call it a snow globe, because effectively it's on a snowy sea. Instead of having seas, you've got snow, and if you fall off your boats or your mounts, you fall into the snow and have to swim through the snow to get back up. And down there, it's all almost like Mad Max style, as you've got raiders coming and attacking you as you're travelling. Meanwhile, up on top, it's very much more scavenging. There's no snow ski, there's no snow sea up there. It's just a clear dome almost, which you have to travel across fighting bugs. Until one day Kana finds a hole in the dome, another hole since he's found another one before, and going to that dome he finds a girl floating up on a balloon. See, early on in the episode she manages to escape these raiders alone by hitching a ride on a floater she calls it. Their big plan was to fly up to the trees to discover what's up there. There's these weird big pillars attaching the earth to the dome and nobody knows what's up there. What's up there is other people. This is going to be on about that Liliha and Kane are getting to know each other, different cultures clashing, and exploring the world. I mean, I don't know where they're going to go from here. They've only just met. And Liliha's still out of it. She, she doesn't know she's up there yet. But one thing which immediately stood out to me, and has probably stood out to you while I've been talking about it, we'll pick this up there. This is very much a CG anime. But it's not a distracting CG. It's not bad. It's pretty damn good for an anime. And I'll be honest, if more anime was reduced in this fashion, with this quality art it may be good it's not trying to be weird about being CG except a few bits which are a bit weird it just feels a bit smooth and that's what a lot of people have a problem with anime which is CG it feels uncanny because how smooth it is but I'm not gonna fault it for being CG I enjoyed the way it looked it worked for show it doesn't work for every show but it does work for this show and don't know that put you off the anime either Maybe give it a try, it's not a terrible anime. I mean, I was willing to write it off based on just the pictures and premises since it looks so dull and boring. But I'm intrigued about where this goes next. Again, it's probably not a show I'm going to catch up with myself, given the high volume of other shows I'm going to be watching this season. But if you are interested in watching Kana, you can find it airing over at Crunchyroll. And so the final four shows this season were Reborn to Master of Blade, From Hero King to Extraordinary Squire, Kubo Won't Let Me in be, be Invisible, Campfire Cooking in Another World with My Absurd Skills, and Kinda of a Great Snow Sea. Let me know what you thought of them, and thanks for watching watching my previews this season. Join me again next season for more, and catch me on Twitch every day for more Wing Fit Adventure. Thanks for watching, bye bye.